Like many of you in the modern world, I have always taken the internet for granted. Whether it is to check my email, messages from friends, or catch up on the latest episode of Rick and Morty, I've always been using the internet. With the latest news on net neutrality, it made me think about who exactly owns the internet, so I dug a bit into the history of how the internet came to be. The initial seed for the idea came from Leonard Kleinrock's paper Information Flow in Large Communication Net, published on May 31st of 1961. In it, he talked about transferring information on a communication net, where nodes that can connect to each other could receive, sort, store, and transmit messages. Throughout 1960s, the development of the ARPANET project was born. ARPANET stood for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. This was led by Robert Taylor and Lawrence Roberts. The first message that was sent from UCLA to Stanford Research Institute was through ARPANET. The message that was sent was the word login, but before the transmission could finish, it crashed, resulting the final transmission to be the letters L and O. In 1973, Vinton Cerf and Robert Kahn designed the TCP. TCP stands for the Transmission Control Protocol, which is a set of rules that define how data is exchanged through two computers on a network. TCP is followed by IP, Internet Protocol, which establishes how computers send packets of data from one computer to another. TCP IP eventually became the set standard to how data is sent through the Internet up to this day. Vinton Cerf and Robert Kahn are commonly credited for the invention of the internet. In 1983, ARPANET adopted TCP IP. During the time, many agencies also developed their own networks to communicate over the internet. In 1984, the National Science Foundation designed NSFNet to connect small computer networks with large supercomputing centers. ARPANET eventually was replaced by NSFNet and decommissioned in 1990. As a side note, in 1990, Tim Berners-Lee developed HTML, which is a huge part to how we view the internet today. In 1991, he introduced the World Wide Web to the public. The World Wide Web is a set of pages connected with hyperlinks that run on the internet. The World Wide Web is just one way, albeit the most popular, way to transfer information on the internet. Okay, back to NSFNet. The National Science Foundation initially allowed only government agencies and universities to utilize the internet. But in 1989, the first US ISP internet service provider was born, called The World. Other commercial ISPs started to show up following The World, such as CompuServe, The Source, America Online, also known as AOL. You've got mail. Internet services were provided over the phone line, known as dial-up. The speed of dial-up was 0.0024 megabits per second at the time, compared to my modern internet connection, which is 200 megabits per second. Since dial-up used the same phone line for the internet and the home phone, this meant that you could either be on the phone or be on the web. Due to the limitations of the phone line, ISP switched to a digital subscriber line, DSL, which essentially sends the data on a different frequency, allowing you to get online and be on the phone simultaneously. This made the internet way faster, up to 6 megabits per second. Ultimately, we switched over to satellite internet, which was not limited by cables and wires. But due to the cost and infrastructure of setup, we pay ISPs to allow us to communicate with other networks of computers. This means that when I browse the internet, I expect to be able to talk to who I want, watch what I want, when I want. All content on the internet is fair game and treated equally. This is known as net neutrality. ISPs can't influence what I do online. Now without net neutrality, there isn't anything stopping the internet service providers from blocking or slowing down certain websites holding the information we want hostage until we pay them more money. This is an example of what the internet would look like if this happened. Now you may say to yourself, well, I can just choose a different service provider, can't I? But how many choices of ISPs are actually in your area? So going back to the original question, who owns the internet? The answer, I think, is we do. Through years of innovation and help from some very smart people and organizations, we as a people created a way to communicate with each other all over the world through the use of computers. The internet is simply an extension of our freedom of speech. The Federal Communication Commission, the FCC, wants to repeal net neutrality, which would greatly restrict the freedom we have on the internet today. So please, 
let your friends know, family know, congressperson know, let everybody know that you want net neutrality. I'd love to hear what your views on net neutrality are. Are you for it or are you against it? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next. next, 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 next. <laughs>